Hey, welcome to Life in the Leadership Lane. I'm your host, Bruce Waller, where I get to talk to leaders that are making a difference in the workplace and in our communities. What did they do to get started? And what are they doing to stay there? And oh my goodness, here we are, summer of 2024. And I am bringing you another special guest. As today, I'm getting to talk to Donna Howard. Donna is the Chief Human Resources Officer at Finet Dermatology. And she is also the 2023 recipient of the Dallas HR Lifetime Achievement Awards that was recently uh, presented at the HR Stars Gala. Donna, it's so good to have you on the show. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Bruce, and it is a true honor to be here. Well, thanks again for joining me. I've had you on my list to get you on the show, and now here we are. Hey, I want to. I always like to start the show off reflecting. We've known each other for a long time through Dallas HR, HR Southwest Conference, and those circles. But recently, you were presented with a Lifetime Achievement Award, and we got to see each other at the gala. Let me first of all ask you this. What did you think about the gala? It was over the top. It was so well done. I give applause, applause to Jimmy and his team. And I heard nothing but accolades about how it was run, how organized it was, how beautiful it was. I think everyone just had a wonderful time. And it was kind of like everybody come together that you normally don't get to see. And it was just great. It was a great event. Yeah, it's like a it's like a like a friend's reunion. And, That's the and, word I was looking for. Thank yeah, you. <laughs> right. And it's also like the the who's who in the HR community as well. It'd be Tony Bridwell. He's emceeing the event. You got all these leaders. I recently had on some different uh, recipients who, who uh, won awards. Kenny Braxton, uh, he was on yes. the show. He won the uh, DE&I award. And Allison Flannery, I had her on the show recently. Sure. And so now I get to have you on the show. And I, I want to dive into that here uh, during the show. But before we get started, I would love for you to share uh, Finet Dermatology uh, who is Finet and, and how do you serve your customers? You know, a lot of people do ask who Finet is because it is actually based in Franklin, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Um, we we have dermatology practices all over the country. Um, we're in 18 different states, have over 250 uh, providers who include physicians. And it's a PE-backed MSO, which means a private, private equity-backed management services organization. Mm-hmm. So we partner, um, sometimes it's through um, JVs, sometimes it's through actual acquisitions, but we partner with various dermatology practices and we provide all the services, quote unquote, behind the curtain, anything from HR to legal to marketing to finance. So then that way, the physicians and the providers can focus on taking care of the patients. I love that. The Wizard of Oz, that's the right. woman behind the curtain. I love that. No, that's fantastic. Uh, and I appreciate you sharing that. Cause, uh, again, a lot of people don't know uh, the organization. I always put a link in the show notes. If you want to learn a little bit more, you can check that out. Uh, but hey, let's, let's, uh, I want to, I know you, Donna, but uh, <laughs> there's probably a lot of things I don't know about you. I'd love for you to share the Donna Howard story. Like, where did you grow up and how in the world did you get into HR and leadership? Well, that second question is, is it going just kind of by default, but I'm born and raised in Fort Worth, Texas, and so I'm a local girl and have had the opportunity, a potential opportunity to live in a lot of different places, and for whatever reason, I always say I end up in Texas, so even even though we're in Franklin, I travel up there, um, but I don't live up there. And went to school locally, um, went to TCU for my, for my undergraduate degree. So I have uh, purple blood, mm. definitely horned frog. No frogs. <laughs> That's right. And then went to UTA later when I got my master's. I didn't start off in HR per se. I started mm. off on the insurance side. Mm. I'd taken some courses at TCU, really liked insurance, although some people might find that boring, but I found it fascinating. And that ended up leading me into HR. Hmm. I went to work for an international insurance company as their HR manager and really had not done HR formally. I had had HR responsibilities in other other positions previously and went to work for um, this company and ended up learning so much from my manager. His name was Tom. Tom was the one that would come in and fix everything. If there was a a location that was in disarray, he came in and fixed it. But he had the reputation of 
basically being um, a bully. And he had a plaque on his office, uh, on his desk that said, my way or the highway. <laughs> I'll never forget that. And people were intimidated by him. But I learned so much from that man. And he really did have a soft side. He just didn't want people to know about it. And when I wanted to have a function um, there in the office, people, people said, well, is Tom going to say it's okay? And I said, well, this is my decision. Then when we had it, and nothing bad happened, <laughs> they realized, okay, well, maybe he's okay. He just stayed in his office. He didn't participate. Mm. He didn't want to have anything to do with it, but he didn't say no. And then fast forward, um, we ended up having to close the office. And we were literally the last two people standing in a shell of a building. And he gave me a hug, which he had never touched me at all the entire time I worked for him. But he gave me a hug and thanked me for everything I had done. Hmm. And at that moment, I knew he truly was a person. You know, he wasn't just a manager. He just wasn't a boss, but he really did care about his people. But but his employees didn't know that. And I know for whatever reason, he didn't want them to know that. But he would go to bat for anybody and would stand up for his people no matter what. And I just appreciate everything I learned from him. The HR is my true passion. Mm -hmm. And it's about helping people, helping organizations. And HR touches every facet of an organization because that's what makes the difference between one company and another. It may provide the same services, but it's the people that make the difference. And that's how I got to HR and the rest is history. Yeah, it's all about people. I love that. There is so much here, Donna, that I want to get into. First of all, Franklin, Tennessee. We're we're our headquarters is in Memphis, Tennessee. So okay. I, I yeah, enjoy some good barbecue in the great state of Tennessee. Love that. There you go. Hey, okay. So I want to I want to dive into this. I, I do want to talk about mentors for a second, but you mentioned something here that there's some people listening right now. They're taking notes. Donna, we've only been on for a few minutes and I have a half a page of notes here. So uh <laughs> I want to talk about Tom. Okay. okay. First of all, he's got this brand that he's built, you know, this my way or the highway people are finding him, you know, very difficult probably to be, to, to approach and things like that. And there's probably some people listening right now going, Hey, I have a Tom in my office. Like, but what you said was uh, interesting because uh, you said you learned a lot from Tom. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people will look at someone like that and like, hey, you know what? I don't want anything to do with that. I'm just going to do my job. I'm going to do what I need to do. How did you like, what did you like learn from him? And and, and where did that come from? Because you have to be open to learning from someone like that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, anyone that has a plaque on their wall that says my way or the highway, you're like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> but you like, I love that because you also use the word appreciate like you looked at him as a person you you saw through that and i'm just for people that are listening right now like where did that come from you know bruce i've had a cup i've had a few times in my career mm -hmm. and one thing that i've learned is to find out why mm. why are they this way and tom tom's background was such where he had to prove himself over and over and over again and so he just developed a very tough skin. And then and then when he basically was assigned to fix something, no matter what, then he, whenever he would come into a new location, it was like, I this is my job hmm. and you're going to do what I say. Now, could he have done it a little bit differently? Absolutely. Because one of the things that I learned from him as well as from others is if people understand the why, they're more likely to follow. They're more likely to have buy-in. But he wouldn't do that. He just said, do it my way. If he had taken the time to say, do it this way because this is this is this is what we're trying to accomplish, or this is why we're doing it this way, or this is what corporate wants, or what whatever it would be, but he that just wasn't his style. And you know, there was another gentleman who was similar to that. His name was Bill. And I remember this so well because he basically yelled at me during the interview, <laughs> but he wasn't going to be my, my manager. He was the chief operating officer. And when I got, when I uh, went there, I, I took the job in spite of him. But within the first week, he comes to my office and he said, I want you to know, he said, I don't want, I want you to stay out of my business. 
Mm -hmm. I don't want to have anything to do with HR. So just, just leave my team alone. I said, okay. <laughs> so I did, but then I would just, you know, go to his office occasionally and say, just want to check in. Is there anything you need? And to make a very long story short, the reason why he was that way was that this was a spinoff from a much larger organization. Mm. And HR at the larger organization was the HR police. Mm. You know, how HR used to be. So he he had a disdain for HR. And I got it. I mean, I, I understood it. But as I as things went on, I would say, you know, if there's anything I can do to help. Well, then... He finally let my team and I start recruiting for him. And then we start partnering to, you know, cover certain positions that, you know, that H, believe it or not, HR and, and ops was responsible for. Fast forward, the new the CEO of the current company had decided to sell. So we were all, we all knew that eventually either we were going to get spun off or we were going to have to look for new jobs. So I I started I started looking for a new job and I found one. I gave him my notice. And he came to my office and he said, is there anything I can do to convince you to stay? Mm. And I will tell you, Bruce, I started crying. Oh. And I said, Bill, you don't know how much that means to me. Mm. Again, that was a learning opportunity to, to find out why people do what they do. Mm. And I've learned that over and over again in my career, rather than jump to the conclusion that they're a bad person or they just don't like people What's motivating their behavior? And when you come to understand it, you may st you still may not agree with it, but you understand it. And that's that's building that relationship that you otherwise might not have. This is so good. I love this because, again, I know there's people listening right now going, you know what? I, I need to, like, really try to understand the why. Uh, mm -hmm. what's, what's going on here? Uh, I, uh, in my book, life and leadership lane, I talked about developing influence in the workplace. And one of the ways you do that is you need to attract or get sponsors, right. To, mm -hmm. to move ideas or whatever it is through the organization. And a sure. lot of times those sponsors though are naysayers and, and, and those are the people that can really help you. And, and so as you're sharing this about Bill, I'm sitting there going, oh, he's one of those naysayers, you know, but he's a guy that can really help you through the process. If you can just work, work, you know, get to know him and, 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 and the why behind it and just continue to look for ways to serve. Exactly. And that's what HR does. We are yeah. here to serve others. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Hey, well, let me, let me ask you this. I, I, I did want to ask you, uh, I always like to ask my guests if there's maybe mm -hmm. some I don't know, some mentors, any, any other mentors you want to shout out and maybe something that was helpful that they did for you on your journey? Yeah, she doesn't know this, but my sister was oh. a mentor. Um, she is... What's your sister's <clears throat> name? Her name is Diane. Diane. Okay. And Diane, back in the day, she's she has been retired for over 35 years. She was, she was a co-owner of a TPA and they sold, I believe to Cigna back in the day. So she financially, she set for life. She retired when she was maybe 40, hmm. <laughs> but, but growing up, she would just share things that would happen at the office and what she was doing and what she was having to do. And I just, at the time, I would just listen to what she had to say because she was my sister. But I would, I would oftentimes find myself in situations saying, what would Diane do? Hmm. So she doesn't know that, but she, she had a, a big impact on my career. And then there was a lady, uh, and there still is a lady. Her name is Sharon. Mm -hmm. I met Sharon. Early in my career, she what she had a boutique outplacement firm, and so I was one of her customers. Fast forward, we are we still are friends, and we've been through a lot together. She, um, she's helped me so many times over the over the years, um, and we I could call her today, and it would be as if nothing, as if we just talked to each other last week. And she's she's such a solid business person, but she has such a big heart. Mm. And she would help me think through things so many times. So I give a lot of credit to her and believe it or not, and I haven't told him this either, but my husband, 
Mike is so practical and level-headed and I tend to go up and down on the scale and he's even healed <laughs> all the time. And if Sharon was ava wasn't available, I would talk to my husband about it. Then when I would talk to Sharon, Sharon would give me the same advice that Mike did. <laughs> I thought, okay, <laughs> if one's not available, the other one is, but it's just, you know, oftentimes Bruce, human resources is common sense. Yeah. And even the, with the classes that I teach, the certification classes, I will tell them HR is common sense. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes I just have to be reminded of that by my mentors that if you do the right thing, if you're fair and you think through things logically, you'll come to a resolution. Now, not everyone thinks that way. That's why HR is here. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Uh, what would Diane do? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's a great. No, I what what I really love about this is that so I, I've had, you know, 200 plus guests on the on the show and uh that's the common thread is that it doesn't matter where you're at in your career you've had people help you get to where you are and what i love about your story is uh, it includes family in like mm -hmm. for me the same way you know my brother's been a great mentor for me mm -hmm. and uh family members have been great mentors and i love that when a, a guest shares not just people outside the workplace or in the workplace but also in the home and yes. uh, I, I love that. I love all that. Oh my goodness. This has been good. Hey, I want to ask you one uh, more question before we roll into leadership here. And that sure. is, I'll, you know, I wrote the book, find your lane. And that's really about finding your calling, your purpose. So mm -hmm. you talked about, you started out in insurance, then you, you know, became an HR manager. Now here you are the chief human resources officer. Was there a moment when you said, you know what? I found my lane. I found what I want to do. Or were there moments? Talk about that. Well, I, I'll go back to um, Tom because mm -hmm. it it didn't it didn't occur while I was with him, but after that, and I reflected on everything that I had learned from him and all the different opportunities he gave me, that and he did it with no strings attached. It helped me to realize this is what I love to do. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was interviewing with him. He said, now you're going to be responsible for the budgets. I said, okay. And I'm thinking to myself, I've never done a budget, <laughs> but okay, yeah. I'll do it. But that's, mm -hmm. but that he, he just empowered people to do what they do best. Yeah. And he knew how to pick people. He knew, obviously there were some things, some kind of chemistry there where he realized he could rely on me to get things done. Mm -hmm. And then over time, I proved myself and he was the one coming to me saying, Donna, you need to go home. Mm. You put in a full day, go home. Well, that's not how I'm wired. It's like I do, I get things done until I can find a good stopping place. But he, he also helped me to set boundaries, which has helped me to help my team set boundaries. Mm. I mean, I just learned so much from that man and he has no idea. Mm. And, and I think it was just, you know, when, when I had to find another job, I got another HR job. And then that just, and then it just built on upon itself where all of a sudden I realized, you know, this is what I want to do. So then when I was probably maybe five or six years later, I was in a situation where, and I won't go into too much detail, but it was a turning point for me. Mm. And to be very transparent, I, I was married at the time. And my husband passed away mm -hmm. and I, and I was in an insurance company and I thought to myself, you know, what I'm doing right now, it's a, it's a solid job. It's not going anywhere. I could, I could do this forever. There were people around me who had been there 20 years and I'm thinking to myself, but I want more. Mm -hmm. So that's when I went back to school and got my, my master's in human resources, because at that moment I knew I wanted to stay in HR and I wanted to grow as an HR professional. So it was part of a personal change that, you know, that I had no control over, but helped me to really get focused mm -hmm. and say, okay, what do you want to do with your life? Because no one's going to take care of you. You're responsible for yourself. What are you going to do about it? Mm -hmm. And that's when I, you know, put on my big girl pants and said, okay, I'm going to have to take care of myself. And that's, I think that was the pivotal moment when I realized 
if I want to be serious about HR, then I need to invest in myself mm. because no one else is going to do it for me. Yeah. I love that. Invest in yourself. That's such great advice uh, for at any time in your career that that's the best investment you can make is in yourself. Mm -hmm. And your second investment is in people. Um, and so just continue to make those. I, I love that story. I appreciate you sharing that. Sure. Uh, I know a lot of listeners will appreciate that as well. Hey, well, let's talk leadership here. Okay. I always like to ask my guests on the show when they come on leadership. It, it, it's like one of those words that has so many definitions. It's really your definition. If someone said, Hey, Donna, what's leadership to you? How would you, how would you describe that? You know, there are so many facets to leadership. Yeah. I mean, a multitude. I mean, look at like you look at the books on leadership and everyone has a different take. And, you know, for, for me, it's a matter of providing opportunities for other people. Mm. Um, and so, for example, what I've learned along the way is there there's a picture that I saw one time, probably on Facebook. I don't know where because I don't say on Facebook much, but it was a picture of a pack of wolves hmm. and the lead wolf was at was at the back oh making sure that his pack or her pack were going in the right direction and making sure that no one was left behind hmm. i remember that so vividly that picture that my job is to make sure that my team has is going in the right direction hmm. and Without them, there is no team, so I need to take care of them. And one way to do that is to get behind them. Mm. And one of the things that I make every point to do every time I visit with one of my one of my employees is when we end the conversation, I say, what do you need from me? Mm. Because I believe I'm here to help them, to remove the roadblocks, to, to make them better. And it's a and from that, what what motivates them? I don't believe that I can necessarily motivate someone. I think that comes from within. But what motivates you is different from what motivates me. So what is it that motivates one of my employees versus another versus another versus another? For one, it's she says, Donna, just let me go. Let me do what I need to do. Okay, fine. Another one, she wants more responsibility. She wants to take on more. Another one she wants to have the ability to know that it's okay for her to um, take time off to get her doctorate. Mm. Go, go do. Mm. I don't you know if that's if that's what makes you happy. Go do, and and so it's a matter of getting to learn them as people mm. and not as an employee, but a person. Because you're you're you can't you can't leave your personal life at the door. Mm. Just like <laughs> when you go home. I'm going to talk to Mike about what happened today. I mean, it's all intertwined yeah. and you have to appreciate that and you have to respect that. And to me, as a leader, it's a matter of looking at each one of my employees as a whole person and what can I do to help them? I remember there was, I worked for a company and the president and I were walking down the hall and people were passing us and I would say hello to them. And like you said, in the very beginning, the best thing that someone likes to hear is their name. Mm -hmm. And I would say, hi, Ellen, hi, Bob, mm -hmm. hi, Susie, whatever. He said, Donna, how do you know all these people? Mm -hmm. I said, well, <laughs> let's <laughs> talk to them. <laughs> but it's a matter of, you know, to me, that's part of leadership. Another thing is when you bring them together, you know, something else like we talked about earlier, tell them why. Mm -hmm. If I say we need to, we need to focus on time of service. And, and that that's something else we can talk about later. And I'll say, this is why, because mm -hmm. this is how it's going to help us help the company from a bottom line standpoint. What can we do? Get their involvement. Don't have things happen to them. Have things happen with them. Mm -hmm. Because if, because then if, if they feel like that you care as a leader about their input and what they think, I, I don't have all the answers, Bruce. There's no way. But if I can pull together a team that together they make things happen, I mean, that's that's music. That's that's what we want. We want people to work as a team. And I have 
the best team. I actually put that on LinkedIn not too long ago. I saw some posting that team. I said, "That this is this is out. This is mine." <laughs> I am so proud of them because of where they've been versus where they are today. Mm. It's it's phenomenal. Now, did I have something to do with that? Probably, but at the same time, they have to want to do something. And so, then as a leader, what do I need to do? to get them motivated? What do I need mm. to do to have them have compassion and be passionate about what they do? Another thing to me is being a role model. If I say, you know, this is when we're going to show up for work, then I have to show up for work. If if I say, this is, this is the deadline, then I have to I have to meet that deadline. I also believe in holding people accountable. As a leader, you need to hold your people accountable. I actually, um, this at the beginning of this year, I said to them, I want, besides our business goals, I said, I want each one of you to have a personal development goal. Mm. Now, I would like for it to apply to the business in some way. So basket weaving is off the table. I said, however, whatever that looks like. And someone said, well, I want to learn PowerPoint better. Okay. Another person said, I want to get my certification. Okay. Another one said, I want to learn some, some kind of training class. Okay. What, whatever. But then I said, you have to submit your, your personal goal by this date or your merit increase next year will be adversely impacted. Mm. To me, I think you have to set boundaries. You have to say, this is what needs to be done, but then you walk the talk. I mean, you you do what you say you want them to do. So, you know, all that together, I think, makes a good leader. Mm. At least that's the leader I want to be. And when someone says, Donna, wherever you go, I want to go with you. Bruce, that's the best compliment I could get from anybody. Mm. And and I have had that happen in the past. And, I, and actually, this year with performance reviews, I said, okay, I'm giving you an assignment. When you come to the table for us to talk about your performance review. I want you to tell me what I can do better mm. because we all have our blind spots. And if there's something that I need to do more of, less of what, you know, that, that saying, tell me, because I may not realize that what I'm doing isn't what you want, isn't what you need or you want. It's not what you expected. And I asked that question. I just said, you know, when you give me that feedback, be gentle about it. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. <laughs> give it to me. <laughs> give it to me. Just give it to me. That's I right. love that. There's so much here. Oh my goodness. I love that. How you said leadership is about providing opportunities for others. I, I, I love all that and finding, finding ways to motivate your team. And that, 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 you know, I've always used the term, you got to walk slowly through the crowd. Talk to your team members. You got to learn about them. You got to talk to them. You know, I recently had somebody at the uh, Sherm conference. Uh, I was talking to, they were kind of, we were walking together for a couple of days and they're like, how do you remember everybody's names? And I said, I really work on it. I talk to them, but I work on it. I mean, that's a, that's something you have to really work. On. You have to want to do that, you know, yes. uh, but I love also how you talked about, um, you know, holding people accountable. That's, that's not easy. It's not easy to do. And sometimes that involves uh, tough conversations. I want to talk about team leadership for a second, because uh, you just mentioned, hey, I have the best team. I love that. Like when someone says that, I'm like, they love their team. Let me let me ask you this, though. You know, when it comes to having the, the best team, the right team, what, what, how do you know? Like, how do you know that I have the best team or the right team or the team that can get me to where we need to go? Are there certain traits to making a, what I call a high performance team? Could you comment on that? To me, it depends on the organization. Every organization is different, but one, one thing that is, is a common thread for me, Bruce is customer service. Mm. I will tell my team without operations we don't have jobs we don't we don't make money we spend money so what do we need to do to make make things easier for operations and really for everyone yeah. because i'll say everybody is a customer i don't care who they are i remember when i first got to finance one of the one of the hr managers um, 
who I've since promoted. I asked her, I said, how many times have you visited a clinic? Zero. Mm. None of the HR people had ever gone to one of our practices. Mm. Well, how do you, how do you, how do you support operations mm. if you don't even have an appreciation for what goes on every day? Mm. And I said, how often do you get with your senior VP? Because there was a, there was a, there's an HR manager for every senior VP. She never really talked to me. Fast forward, we are now being asked to come out into the field. We're not asking them if we can. They're coming to us. That shows a true partnership. That shows true collaboration. That shows true service. Mm -hmm. And when every one of my team members is being asked to come out to the field, you know you have an awesome team. I love that. I love all of that. You know, I uh, do a lot of, um, I would we'll call them quality checks. We'll go out into the field and talk to the moving crews and kind of see how they're doing, the customer. And uh, I, it reminds me of when I took my, you mentioned certification earlier. I know you teach certification. Uh, when I took my certification, I remember Barbara Hoover saying, you got to know the business. That's your yes. first, that's the most important that you got to know the business. She didn't say you need to know HR. She said, you need to know your business. And mm -hmm. I think that's part of that. Whenever you talk about getting out in the field and, and doing that, hey, you recently, I, I wanted to mention, you. Re I read on LinkedIn where you, I, I think you shared a post or, but it was said HR secret weapon is business acumen. I, I would love for you to talk about that just for a second. How important is that? It's the backbone. I mean, Barbara, Barbara took the words out of my mouth. Mm. You know, and sometimes I'll tell people, I'm an eight, I'm a business person who just happens to specialize in HR. Mm. If, you, if you don't understand what you're trying to accomplish as a business, then how do you know what kind of goals to set? HR cannot establish goals in a vacuum. It's impossible. If it is, how are they, how are they relevant? How do you know? So, you know, to go in and visit with people, the, the senior leaders, what's important to them, the CEO, the CFO, marketing, legal, you know, what, what issues do we have? I remember going into one company and there were seven lawsuits. <laughs> I thought, what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> and when, by the, by the time all said, all said, all was done, mm -hmm. we had zero lawsuits, but I mean, yeah. it's a matter of, you know, learning the business and what can you do to improve? The other thing um, is you have, you have to be able to talk their language yeah. You can't talk HR language. You have to talk their language because not only does that help you understand, but it also builds your credibility as a partner. Mm -hmm. And I do not want to hear any more about HR being at the table. Mm -hmm. That is so antiquated. To me, it should go without saying HR is part of the business period. Yeah. But if we if we're not there yet, it's our fault. I will I will tell you this. When I was a young manager, I remember this. Uh, very clearly because it, it was a very impactful for me and i was a i was a young manager well, maybe even a manager trainee and we had an operations manager that had a change and a new the new guy came in and i remember he talked like it was his company it was just incredible i was like what do you mean because he would say things like well uh you know the you know our our, our team has decided to do this or our company has, he used the word our and we, and it, it was never like they, a lot of times I'll hear different people in different departments say, well, they, you know, or, mm -hmm. or maybe they're different operating companies. Well, let me check with them mm -hmm. versus, Hey, let me check with our team in that area or whatever. How, how do you, how do you teach that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it, it kind of gets back to helping people understand that we're, we're part of an organization that that needs to move forward. But the mm. thing there is you have to share with, with HR and your team what the business goals are. Mm. Not what HR goals are, what the business goals are. That's when they truly believe that they are part of the organization. Mm. And to your point, whenever we have meetings, I'll say this this is this is our goal for this year. These are the top three goals for this year. And that's where I mentioned time of service. I said HR may not be able to support this, you know, this particular goal because it was truly financially centric or financial centric. The, the finance team was doing it. 
I said, but we need to improve our time of service metrics. Mm -hmm. what, can, what can we do as a partner? Then I get with the COO and say, this is what we want to do. And then he said, great, let's do it all. Mm -hmm. But you have to, you have to, embed yourself into the business where then it truly is your business. This is what we are doing, but you bring up a great point. Just saying our versus there mm. is a, is a shift change mentally, but it makes a huge difference. So I'm glad you brought that up. Well, and I looked at him differently. Like uh, from that point on, I was like, wow, he's, he's like, I mean, it made me feel like he is a leader of our organization, right? Not just another guy that's come in to lead the department, but a top level business leader. And at the time he was an operations manager for our Dallas operations, but yeah. it, it was very impactful. And so as you, as you talk about this, I'm like, there's people listening right now and th th I want them to be taking notes right now. You like those little words, our, we, uh, mm -hmm. are truly impactful and they can really shift mindset on this. Hey, I, I do want to shift over here and talk a little bit about this uh, Lifetime Achievement Award. I mean, what an honor. I, I was just looking at the past winner. So you received the uh, Dallas HR Lifetime Achievement Award. And I was looking at some of the past winners, Deborah Averin, Karen Cunningham, Lynn Stewart, and now Donna Howard's uh, part of that. What did, what did that mean to you? And, and and talk a little bit about that. Well, first of all, it came out of nowhere. I mm. had no idea. Okay, when I was going to ask you if you if that was a surprise or how that how that oh, happened. Yeah, Jimmy called me and he said he said the board's meeting. You know, this day he said I need I'd like you to join us for the last fifteen minutes or so. Can you do that? I said sure. I thought well, maybe there's something that they want me to do. You know from a training class or mm -hmm. I had no, I had no <laughs> idea that I said, okay, cause I'm willing to help however I can. Sure. <laughs> and then he said this and I, I could barely talk. Mm. And then he, he had Aaron start speaking and she says, well, Donna, she says, because you've done that. And she just, you know, listed several things mm. that I, I didn't even think of. And I, it doesn't even occur to me because it's just what I do, Bruce. Mm. It's because I like to help people. It's not because I want, I want to be recognized for it. I do it because I love it. I mean, HR is my passion. And Jimmy said, well, it was a no brainer for us. I said, well, <laughs> I said, awesome. you know what? And, and I said, I know people who have gotten this before. Yeah. And they are well known. They mm -hmm. are respected in so many ways. They are so giving. They are great people. And I said to be part of that group mm -hmm. would have never crossed my mind. I it love, was very, it was very humbling. I love that. I love it. Okay, so I, I want I want you to share this because you know you said it's just it's just what I do. It's just who I am. How has getting involved? serving, volunteering your time. How has that helped you in your career? I learned something from everybody I interact with. And I'm one of my, I don't know if you've ever done the strengths finder or whatever they call it these yes. days, uh -huh. but you know, it talks about focusing on your strengths. One of my strengths is being a learner. Mm. You know, my, and Mike's, Mike told me, he's told me this over the, over the past few years, he says, Donna, he said, you know, when it comes time for you to retire, whatever, he said, whenever that is, he said, because I said, I'm not playing retire. He said, you're going to go back to school and get your doctorate. I said, yeah, you're right. I mean, I just, that's just what I do. Mm. But I, every class I teach, Bruce, if, if it's for Dallas HR or the University of Dallas, or I'm coaching someone one off, I learn something from everybody. And that's personally rewarding that's that's selfish to a certain degree but i love mm. it but it, it's also wonderful when you see the light bulb go off mm -hmm. and they get it and you know all all of us in hr we're in, we're in this together and i have reached out to people for help and if someone calls me I'll help them in any way I can on these certification classes for Dallas. I give people my phone number and my email address, yeah. call me. And mm. of all, I mean, I've been doing 
this for over 20 years now. I've only been taken advantage of once. Mm. Everybody else, they may call and ask me a question. If I don't know, I'm going to research. I'm going to find the answer for them. I just, it's just in my DNA, I guess, Mm. to just say, let me do it. I'll help. Yeah. Yeah. I love that because I think we both are in the same boat whenever we say that we know what it was like for people to help us, how Mm -hmm. impactful that was. And now we know the impact it will be for someone else to help someone else. So that's why we do it. We're like, Hey, we know what it feels like. So we want to, we want to, we got, you know, we were, somebody helped us. And so we're going to help other people along the way. And I love that. And I thought it was a very deserving when I first heard you were going to be um, presented that award. I was like, man, well-deserved, well-deserved. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And I know that people around you celebrated uh, along with you. And so what a, what a special night. Uh, and what a special recognition. So, you know, and, and I love what you said though. It's like, well, it's like, it's like, uh, you know, it says at the Nike headquarters, there's no finish line. Like Mm -hmm. I'm just going to, okay. I'm okay. This is a mile marker. I'm grateful. I'm going to treasure this, but I'm going to keep learning and I'm going to keep growing and I'm going to keep doing what I do. And I love that. Um, Hey, here's my, here's my last question. I want to ask you, Um, you also shared uh, on LinkedIn that my goal is to continue being the HR professional who brings solutions to any area of an organization. I know you talked about helping people, but whenever you talk about solutions, what do you what are you really looking for? Because one of the things I talk about in one of my book, Life and Leadership Lane, I'm talking about developing influence again. And I talk about when people start building a business case, if they don't build business cases around things that matter, people won't listen. You won't have influence. They got to be they got to be connected to things that really matter. I I would love for you to comment on this because I I think there's probably some people listening right now is like, Hey, I know, I know I need to add value. How do, how do you do that? How do you bring solutions? What, what do you look for? Well, first of all, you need to find out what's important to them and what they're trying to accomplish and why Yeah. find out the why. But then the other thing too, Bruce, is you have to measure it. Mm. If it's not getting measured, it doesn't matter. And business is run on numbers. Mm-hmm. It does it, even even a nonprofit. It runs on numbers. How many volunteers do we have? How many donors do we have? How many donors that you know gave this much or more? How many donors that donated this you know this amount or less? Everything is numbers. And if you don't have something to measure, then it doesn't matter. I learned this early in my career. I got my undergraduate degrees in finance, and the only the only reason I, I took the only reason I made it my major is because I thought, well, every company has a finance department. Surely I can get a job. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's how I came up with yep. coming up with a finance major. But it has been so helpful to me. And if if people don't understand fin- finances, take a finance course. Sit down with your CFO. They they love to talk numbers, mm. but that's what drives an organization. So my entire team, I guarantee you, <laughs> if you ask them, well, I told them I don't want to do such and such. And, and you say, well, what did she say? She asked, how much is it going to cost? Or how do we know it's going to make a difference? I mean, they, they are just wired that way now. Mm, I love that. But you have to measure everything. Just saying, well, it'll it'll make everybody work harder. Well, what does how you how do you know it's going to make them work harder? What where are the productivity measures? You know, is it going to reduce our training costs? Well, how much does our training cost? What is our training cost? I mean, you have to get into that mindset of showing showing the monetary value. Mm. Um, and and it may be that the metrics are based on other things besides the cost. So for example, I I know the value of, of conducting exit surveys and having it set up to automatically get out, so send out so you can get data so that you can decide what you need to do differently. And I presented it that presented that to the board not too long ago, but I showed them the metrics. 
based on previous experience, based on potential savings, based on, you know, the, the data that's being collected and they loved it, mm. but it was because I had it measured. I remember too, that when I worked for a large organization prior to Finet, it had, it was a $10 billion company in the U S we had 60,000 employees. I was with my manager, my operations manager at the board meeting when the West division and my, my division president finished his presentation, the CEO who was sitting at the, at the front of the room, and there was probably 50 people in the room. He said, I don't think I, I would have ever said this. He said, but human resources measure, has more metrics than any other department in this organization. We knew we had to show the value of what we were doing from a financial standpoint. That is my, that is my number one piece of advice is measure whatever it is that you're trying to do, because that will get the attention of your CFO who has the CEO's ear <clears throat> and the chief operating officer who also is, you know, being held accountable based on numbers. You have to put it in their words. I love that. Measure it. What gets measured gets done. This has been so much fun. I could do this like for hours, Donald. Yeah, it was, <laughs> this it was is, You great. were just Thank filled you. full of wisdom. I love this. Hey, but I want to shift over here to it's time to accelerate for the last few minutes of the show. Yep. Just going to ask you a few fun questions. First uh, question, favorite book. Got a favorite? Yes. Um, it was introduced to me about three years ago. It's called Brief. So you want to take a, take a shot at figuring out what it's trying to tell you? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Be brief. Say, say, exactly. Say more with less. Love that. This is so good. Hey, well, let me ask you this. I, one of the chapters I have in my book said great leaders are grateful leaders. What, do, what are you grateful for? I would say from a business standpoint, my team, mm -hmm. I can do it without them. And they have come such a long way. I've made changes along the way, but, mm -hmm. but what I have now is awesome because Finance knows that they're good hmm. and that, and that I appreciate because I want them to be appreciated. Um, and then I'm grateful for the people along the way. Like we talked about the people have helped me mm -hmm. and both my, my good managers, as well as my bad managers. I've learned something from all of them. Um, and then probably my friends and, and colleagues who I'm very close with that. I know that I could call them at any time and they would be there for me. And I'm very appreciative of that because you can't put a price on it. No, that that's so good. And I'm grateful for you for coming on the show today, Donna. This has been so much fun. Okay. I have two more questions. Yes. Uh, question, uh, what energizes you? Like it can be in the workplace. It can be outside the workplace. What really moves you? That I know I can make a difference mm. in someone's life, especially being, that's one of the reasons why I like healthcare mm. because you know, you're helping someone's life mm. and that you that's that's um that's real special to me. Mm. That and that's something that really motivates me. And like we've talked about, knowing that I've helped someone solve a problem, not solve it necessarily for them, but help them figure it out on their own. Mm. And then you know, learning something new every day, mm. love it. Um, and then from just from a personal standpoint. I teach jazzercise and mm. I love it and it keeps me healthy and I, I'm just, I love it. I need to introduce you to the uh, Oklahoma city HRS uh, president, Kelly. Uh, she is a uh, teacher jazzercise too. So oh, fantastic. Good. I did not know that. Okay. Okay. Here's okay. the final question. Donna, 10 years older is around the corner and she's knocking at your door and you're going to go answer that door. What's she going to tell you? Be true to yourself. Be who you are. Don't make, don't apologize for it. And maintain your standards because you never want to compromise on something that you will regret. Mm -hmm. And, and don't ever, so that way you never regret a decision. And then, as I mentioned earlier, focus on what you're really good at. Don't mm -hmm. focus on what you can't do. Focus on what you can do. 
because that's what makes you successful, both personally and professionally. I love that. I love, especially when you said maintain your standards. I think that is a great, great piece of advice. Donna, this has been so much fun. I appreciate you. I know there's some listeners that are like, oh, I'm not even connected to Donna, or I have a question, or I do want to reach out about a certification. <laughs> if somebody wants to, I don't know, they want to connect with you. What, what's the best way for them to connect? Probably via email, 300dhoward at gmail.com. Of course, I'm on LinkedIn, but um, if there's something that's burning or they they have a question or they just want to reach out, that's that's the best way to do it. Wonderful. I'll put your uh, I'll put your LinkedIn profile as well as your email in the show notes. So uh, okay. if you want to reach out and connect with Donna, be sure and let her know you heard her on Life in the Leadership Lane. Maybe even share something that she said that was impactful for you. And uh, I I know it'd be a great connection. So Donna, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming on the show. Oh. Bruce, Sharing thank you. It's a real honor. Yeah, you're you're welcome. I can't I can't wait to share this. I appreciate you so much. I appreciate your friendship. Same here. Very special. Awesome. Okay.